Alrighty, so as an extra step, you can make gears for your double roller cotton gin to replace the second hand crank. Uh, and this is something I would highly recommend doing, although this is kind of a labor intensive process. If you can purchase some one and a half inch gears to fit on there rather than making them yourself, go for that. But if you'd rather build them or you have to build them for some reason, then this is how you're gonna do it. In order to do that, you're going to need some kind of thinner plywood. This is some 3 8 inch plywood I just had lying around. And here is a 1 and 3 quarter inch hole saw drill bit, which is what you're going to need. And the first step is just pick out a spot on the plywood that doesn't look terribly scuzzy and then just drill out two circles. When cutting these out with the hole saw, it pays to cut halfway through from one side, then flip the board over and cut the other way through. Otherwise, it will break through and you'll be left with a burr like this. Regardless, you're going to be left with some amount of burr on the edge. And when you have this, you're going to want to take it over to a belt sander of some shape or form, or just regular sandpaper, and you're going to want to sand off that burr. Uh, you don't want to get this non-concentric in any way, but you just want to take this edge out here in the middle of the wood where the, the grain or the layers have separated. And there are finished gear blanks. Uh, the next step after this is going to be cutting the teeth, which is going to be incredibly involved. Uh, also, as you can see, I've made five of these because I expect to mess at least half of them up, so I've got spares. Now, the next step in the process for making your gears is you're going to have to make a template of some shape and form. This is an eight-tooth template that I made in MS Paint that I'm using with quarter-inch holes here, so if I want, I can drill out each one of these little recesses with a quarter-inch drill bit but I'm probably just going to remove everything with a coping saw, which is what I would recommend. If you have a scroll saw, that would be even more preferable. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a template. This is the one I have. I'll link that in the description with the instructions on how to make this as well. You're going to want to place it onto your gear blank, get it as centered as you can, and then take your pencil and start tracing outside of the gear. and I've already done that on three of these, and that's what you're going to have. From here you're going to start cutting out everything that doesn't look like a gear, and you you want to cut out in the middle of these pencil marks as well, otherwise you're going to have to do a lot of sanding to fit, uh, because you traced on the outside of your template, so you're going to need to cut all of what you traced off in order to get the proper dimensions. And this will require extensive sanding and filing in order to get everything to fit. Once you have your template traced, you're going to want to take your gear blank, put it in a vise or a clamp, or just hold it very firmly. What, whatever you have on hand that you can use to hold it. And you're going to want to get to cutting out your gear from the blank. Once again, I'm using a coping saw. If you have a scroll saw, by all means use it it would be much better than doing this by hand. And all of this will require filing and fitting with sandpaper, wood files, and maybe even a rasp. So, just get to it. All right, now that you have your gears assembled, you're going to want to pull your rollers back out and you're going to want to drill a centered hole right here on the end of the roller. And that's so that you can mount the gear directly to the end of the roller. And you don't need to drill this three inches like you were with everything else on this gen. You, you just need to get it the length of your screw. I'm using some one and five eight screws because that's what I had lying around, but you can go as small as three quarter inch. As long as it goes all the way through your gear and then at least, you know, three eighths to half an inch into the wood. So this doesn't need to be crazy tight on here. It's not structurally important. It just needs to hold the gear centered and keep it from spinning. And at the moment, we just need to find the center of this and then drill that out. Now, in order to center this, you're going to need your speed square and a fine pencil. 
Um, you can you can set this up in a block or a vise or clamp it to something uh, to get this more stable, but I'm just going to show you how to do it quick and dirty. What you do is you set your roller down on a level surface, then you take your speed square and you line it flush up against the side, and you just run the pencil right down the edge of the speed square along the roller. And that puts you a line right through the middle of your roller, sort of. You want to rotate it about 90 degrees, 30 degrees, whatever you can do handy, and then repeat this and do it at least three times at three different angles. This will give you a center of your dowel, at least someplace approximate. This doesn't have to be crazy precise. You just want to get it within about a sixteenth of an inch of the center. All right, now that you've got this centered, uh, you're going to want to throw it in a vise or something like that and take your drill with an eighth inch drill bit and drill the length of your screw minus the width of your gear. I'm just going to drill into this about an inch and a half. Once again, you don't need to get this crazy precise, but do try and get it centered. And it also does not need to be concentric to the roller in any way, although it would be better if it was. There you go. Now just do that for both rollers and you're ready to mount your gears. All right, now that you have a center hole drilled, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your screw of choice. I have a 1 5 8 exterior uh, wood screw here and I'm throwing a small washer here on the shaft because when this runs into the screw the last thing I want is for this countersink to split my gear in half and absolutely ruin it. If you're working with plastic you don't got to worry at all about that but as you can see here a little bit of behind, behind the scenes magic uh, these are my original prototype plywood gears that I attempted to make and failed quite miserably at doing because the plies of the plywood split apart as you know could be predicted but you know I had the stuff on hand so I decided to give it a shot and the assembly is the same so I'll go ahead and show you that with these anyway so just center it in there and then very carefully screw it into place you're going to want to make sure it is as centered as you can get it before you start really honking this sucker in. And there, I can't rotate that by hand, so that's tight enough. Now I'll just repeat with the next one. Alrighty, there's my second roller. As you can see, they do in fact interlink, but there's going to have to be a lot of fitting involved with this, this pig. But this is just for demonstrational purposes. Now at this point, you're going to want to do the final fitting and finish to make sure that your gears are interlinking correctly, and then you're going to want to remove one of your arms and then cut the remainder off so that the rollers do not interfere with each other, because otherwise, you know, these are going to be bumping into each other. But if you did the arm on the outside, you have the advantage that you uh, actually don't have to cut the roller, so there's a plus for that. Now, one more quick and dirty addition you can do to improve this roller gen is adding bearing surfaces here and here below the rollers. And the simplest way to do that is to just take this top support and this bottom um, roller uh, bushing bar, I don't know what you want to call it, and sand down everything except for these parts right here on the end inside of the supports and up here, everything except for these end parts. You're just going to want to take right from the center like uh, at least an eighth of an inch off and what that does is it makes the rollers only force down on these much smaller surfaces rather than the entire length of this board and the entire length of that board that greatly reduces the friction I just don't feel like doing that at the moment so I've got these little bits of metal lying around and I'm just going to jam these here in the center support underneath the roller to see how these do as a bearing surface now the key to these is that you don't want them moving out of here as this rolls because you know kind of defeats the purpose but as long as you have enough tension that shouldn't be an issue there now that has mildly altered the friction on this I don't think it's any amount to matter with a hand crank system like this but every little bit helps and this is just one of those optional minor improvements you can do 
you know, you can take anything you have in hand. You can take a tiny little shim of wood and shove it under here. Um, like I said, you can just sand an eighth of an inch off of here. Uh, you just don't want any high spots and you don't want to put anything in here that will wear on the roller because if you do, you'll create a void down in here which will result in um, inefficient ginning, uh, seeds being able to get grabbed and crushed and pulled through and you don't want any of that. Well, I gave up on fussing with making wooden gears because it just didn't work. So I went on eBay and bought some cheapo gears for like three, four bucks a piece from China and just said, the uh, heck with it. And these actually work much better. I'll put up the exact specifications for the gears right here, but they end up with a pitch diameter that's almost exactly one and a quarter inch. And you will have to shave down the roller that you take the handle off of in order to get it to properly fit with the back of the handle. But that's one quick and easy mod you can do in order to do this one-handed. The other thing is you may have to key this handle to this so that it doesn't rotate because if these two bind together, especially if I over tighten this, this handle will just sort of rotate. So all you really need to do to do that is just put another screw in at another position through this into the handle or drill a hole through here and then just drop a nail in like that and then that'll key this handle to that roller and then it won't rotate on its axis. Also, as you will note, I have just gone ahead and gotten rid of the bearings and just sanded the bearing board down on the bottom. And that's a far simpler option and it just makes things less complicated and I don't have to deal with the lubricity of the bearings themselves and all that jazz. I still have not done the top up there, but I'll probably do that eventually. Honestly, doing the gears and just sanding down that bearing board is way easier. I don't even know why I was trying to make those out of wood or um, I really don't know why I was trying to do that with little bearing pieces. I do know why I was trying to do it without gears and that was because I was trying not to push the cost above $20, but just getting two gears off of Amazon, you probably, you're going to end up at about $25 in total, which uh, honestly I think is worth it. If you're going to use this in any capacity, that extra like six seven bucks after shipping and all is is totally worth it that's what i've done i've also sanded down the rollers to get all of that paint off of there and in the process this is something that is good to note if you build one of these is when i did the sandpaper i made sure to finish with a few rubs going lengthwise and that puts a a fine rough texture but it's in this direction and that'll help grab onto the lint 